through. I'll say the joke, and then you say the answer. Or you or, or, or make up a bluff. Or make up a bluff. Yeah. Whatever it is. So I said... Uh, 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 Chucko? Chico? Chinko, the gay cowboy. And then... <laughs> I wish I had that hi-hat there. And then Drew leans forward and says... Um, who? Of course, Greeley. Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt, or whoever Drew says. Now, what Drew started doing about halfway into the show is... I'd say my joke answer, and then he would hang back. <laughs> and he'd sit there, and then he'd say, is that it, or you got anything else? And then I'd be thinking to myself, I'd be screaming without moving my mouth. <laughs> no, you dick. That's it. I got one joke. That's my joke. I don't have anything else to say. I don't have a bluff. I don't have another joke lined up. I don't have a list. And now I'm just kind of floating out there. Drew rolls his chair back and leaves me sitting in the square. And I'm sitting there going... Actually, I moved over with uh, Bronson Pinchot at one point. Oh, <laughs> bastard. <laughs> the point is, is I shot my wad. It wasn't a very big one, and now right. I'm sitting there. All right. All right. And you gave me directions. So it came back and started yelling later. at you. Yeah, yeah. All, right. All right. All right. You know we're doing the show again. What? Hollywood no, Squares? Yeah, in two weeks. No way. Yes. You serious? Yep. I'll tell you, I'll do it because I swear to God I'm going to make a mint selling those baskets. <laughs> I really am. How funny is it that my folks got me a basket for Christmas and my birthday? Oh, wow. My dad... There's nothing like the basket you got for me on that uh, show, though. Are you kidding? My dad got me a... You, you get these baskets when you do all these shows, everybody. When you're a guest on a show, you do Keenan or Vibe or, or a game show or whatever it is you do, you get a basket. On our show, you get, you get like a rectal probe. <laughs> and a, uh, a pint of a generic scotch, and they send you on your way. I couldn't imagine you getting anything on uh, if you did Love Line. And we don't get anything. Why should they get no, anything? No, I think they give a little something. Yeah. A little bathrobe yeah. or something. Yeah. But it's worthless. Yeah. It's, it's junk. Yeah. I guarantee it's junk. Yeah. It better be junk. Otherwise, I want, I want to get paid. The point is, is when you do other people's shows, you get baskets. Some are good. Some are medium. Some suck. Yesterday... The uh, Hollywood Squares, that is a hell of a basket. It's $250 oh. worth of basket. At least. I had my Sony Walkman out today. Yeah. I was uh, had, had this beautiful silk tie they gave yeah. you. I mean, it was spectacular. Yeah. The point is, the thing that's funny is my dad, you know, now that I'm an adult and I make 70 times as much <laughs> as, my, as my dad, Actually, I was making 70 times as much as he was uh, when I was cleaning carpets. I was making 45 times as much as he made when I was cleaning carpets. But the point is, is he doesn't know what to get me. He doesn't have much money. Christmas rolls around, him and the stepmom, Lynn, you know. So he's, he sends her to Gelson's, and she gets me a little basket. That's right. you know, the basket's got, uh, you know, some chalk in it or something, and like a, a, scan of, a can of SpaghettiOs that was dented that they couldn't sell. Yeah, and the sugar nuts. <laughs> the sugar nuts and the, uh, and the uh, salmon snaps. And I'm thinking to myself, how ironic is it that this basket, which I'm getting as a gift, now counts for me is, is nothing. It's like giving an airline pilot uh, honey roasted nuts. Yeah. You know, and it's yeah. like, oh, for Christ's sake, not another bag of nuts. I'm going to kill myself. Right. I haven't had the heart to say anything to him. Maybe they'll hear it on the radio. But the point is, is, is I now get baskets each year from my but, dad. But, but, They're worse than the baskets I get from Keenan. But they can't come close to this thing. No, yeah. no. Nothing you couldn't. Can. Listen, if you took a, a Jaguar, put it in a blender, and dumped it into yeah. a basket, it wouldn't be as good as yeah. what was in this basket. Yeah. I hope we get that basket again. That's why we're going back. That is. That, and I got video games and good food over there. I'm bringing my kids this time. Okay, but Put don't, don't bring your wife. Don't bring the wife. So, tell her you love her. I love her. Come Rachel. On, come on. Susan, I love you. Okay. I hope that sounds sincere. Rachel? Yes. You're 28. Yeah. What's going on? Well, I had a question for Dr. Drew, but yeah. Adam, you probably be like this question, too. Um, I'm about 5'3", and I weigh about 150, mm -hmm. and my breast size is a 38 double D. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, can that cause, like, any, like, shoulder problems or back problems? Uh, are you asking because you're having problems? You're having symptoms? Well, like, my shoulder sometimes will bother me. And, of course. Uh, I mean, of course. Yeah, can, my shoulder hurts. I don't even have boobs. It can round, <laughs> cause, your, in, in sort of broad strokes, it can cause your shoulders to round forward. It can disturb your posture. It can cause a deep groove from the bra, bra strap. It can affect the kinesiology of your neck and potentially cause some arthritis there. So absolutely. That, in fact, uh, some plastic surgeons would say that, uh, at least some surgeons would say that that's the reason for breast reduction, is those sorts of symptoms. Well, well, the thing is that I, I plan on losing weight, too, so I was wondering um, how much can I look for him to 
it's, get smaller. It's, it's different. Way, it's different in different people, but that's usually is, the first that it's goes. It's mostly fatty tissue, and so I think your plan is a good one. Most big gals have big breasts. Oh, otherwise, we know there wasn't a god. <laughs> the cruelest joke you're playing a woman. Could you imagine well, that? Actually, I'm like... I'm, Hold I'm, on a second. Can you imagine that? The, the uh, bigger your ass gets, the smaller your boobs get. Mm. Oh, yeah, see. Maybe there is a God. You're right. I never really thought of it that way. But could you imagine that tra tragic combination? And where was Rachel? I'm sorry, Rachel. Go ahead. When it, what I do notice is that when I... Um, a lot of times is that I'll walk with my shoulders droop because... N not because... Um because my shoulders are hurting and it's because I don't want people to see it. People to see them. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, the first, that's, the first that's certainly what younger them. women typically do. You're 28, right? Right. Hmm. Wait, she's been doing it for a while? No, she just sounds a little younger than 28. No, uh, no. Uh -oh. Anything up with you, Rachel? No, no. Huh? no I mean, it's just... Molestation? When I was younger, yeah. When I was younger. Oh, okay. But other, but no, other than the molestation, it's really you've gotten off pretty good. Oh yeah, there's. I mean, okay. That's. I mean, that's not even really an issue. Drew anymore. suspected something was up. That's all I'm saying. Well, no. The thing. I. Well, the thing that bothers me is that's the first thing that anybody will notice. What the boobs? Oh yeah. All right, but yeah. the deal is what I noticed. Who molested you? Oh, I was in high school. I was a high school band teacher. Oh boy. Really? Well, what I noticed was your voice and the concern, and I suspect that weight is a way of sort of pushing people away. You know? Ooh. Yeah, you're right. And so, you know, if, if you want to successfully keep the weight off and uh, at least make it an easier task, begin to deal with those issues, too. And you'll feel better about yourself the more you're able to connect with other people. What happened vulnerable. before the band teacher? What a dad or grandpa or anybody else? No, no, it mm -hmm. was just, I mean, that's... That just kind of like started a whole a whole lot of things. And yeah, by the way, I, I think she's I think this is right. By the way, you do because I'm I'm picking up on like eighteen, sixteen. She's like sixteen. She's oh, she's stuck there. at sixteen. Yeah, Were yeah. you about sixteen when he did this? And I actually I was um, the younger fifteen. Oh, excuse no. me. Oh. I was in high school. You're like six months off, Drew. I was. Uh, What'd you play? The uh, tuba. <laughs> You kidding? That thing weighed more than I did in high school. Bass drum? What'd you play? I played I played drums and I played flute. Ah, and and so you were slender back then. Uh, I was I I didn't break a hundred pounds till my sophomore year in high school. Oh really? Uh, how about oh, quite down, Drew? How big were the, were, the, were the, was the chest then? I've all, actually I've always been not big, but um, how can I say full? Uh -huh. I've never been Ooh. certainly never been as big as I am now. And what happened with the band teacher? Well, of course. I mean, listen, you, look, 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 it's it's like you put on, you know, 30 extra pounds, you you, you, you get a double chin. I mean, you, you know what I mean? You're, oh, you're, I had a right. double chin even when I was thin. All right. Listen, goofball, stop crapping on my points and tell me what this band <laughs> teacher did to you. Well, it, um, he basically raped me. Yeah. Really? Did you report him? I didn't report it right away because I didn't know what to do. Because, well, this band teacher... Um, at the high school that I went to, this this band, the marching band that I was in, was, I mean, known throughout the country. And this band teacher that did it was very highly respected. Wow. We mm -hmm. wonder why you were prone to make yourself such a good victim and not speak up. Were you struck by your parents when you were growing up? Were you ever hit? I was spanked, yeah. Mm -hmm. Where's your dad? Oh, my dad's around. Actually, my parents are ordained ministers now. Oh, that's trouble. Dad's trouble. You, come on, Dad. I had, a, I had a hard time. I mean, even sometimes now, just um, saying things that are bothering, that are bothering. Right. Me. Certainly as bad okay. as, as, as it was then. Yeah. Because right. I didn't mention the abuse at all until probably uh -huh. about... How many times did the band teacher rape you? Or get to um, you? That I can remember oh. six. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Okay. Thank God I've never played an instrument in high so, school. Again, so the weight here is a symptom of a far greater complex. And uh, maybe, you know, a really healthy thing for her to do would be get a therapist, start working this stuff out. Obviously, the family's not going to be a great source of assistance in all this. And indeed, if she can deal with some of these emotional issues, the weight may kind of come off more net, I mean, spontaneously even. I mean, she's eating to treat all kinds of other issues right yeah. now. Not the least of which is to keep people repelled. Right. Um... And she's oh, ashamed man. of herself, and she's yeah. guilty, and she can't talk to Something anybody. happened before that. Sure. Something set sure. her up for and, that. Oh, yes.
But n- but I don't think it was overt. It was something that she'll discover as she. All right, let me ask you a quick question, Drew. Yeah. Do you think someone like Rachel calls, thinking that we're going to talk about breast? Ask her. Demigmentation. Ask her. Now, well, that we won't get to the bottom of it with her. She won't know. Uh, she'll tell you. She'll tell you she called the show to talk about a, a surgical procedure, but we know. We meet, we picked up immediately that there was more than that. She was raped. There was something going on. There are many other issues involved. I want to know from you, Drew, <laughs> did she know on some level we would delve into that? Do you know what I mean? No. I would say, I would say no, but it is that... Don't you think she knew it on a level? But it, it is... When I think it is, it, it's sort of a quality of what's called basking in the narcissistic glow. Uh-huh. That we're going to somehow magically connect with her, and that the connection's what she was looking for, and that sort of narcissistic it massage. I think some of our things. listeners must know that that's we're going to get into more than whatever well, it is people, they're talking people, about. It's interesting. I've been they, as I've been carted around town here lately. People keep bringing up Judge Judy, and they keep saying, "I can't believe these people get in front of her and don't know she's going to just ream them," and and they claim they don't. That they they really just don't. They're just not. They're not putting that all together. Mm-hmm. That they were going to go for these things, or that these things are even issues to them. Because in their world, that, that's all behind me. I dealt with that. Mm-hmm. I believe on some level. On some, they want to get into it. I think it. it's again. You understand why do they want to connect with us in the first place? I don't know. It's that it's know. that that magical quality, you know, of the media. That, it sort of supports a narcissism. Kind all of. right, let's go uh, real fast with Mike, then we'll uh, take break. You want to do a fast one? We do a fast one. You want to know? Yeah, Mike's not fast enough. Uh uh-uh. <laughs> No, he's not. This All right, hold on there, Mike. Mike molested uh, somebody. That'll be interesting. Jason. Yeah. You're 15. While trying to pierce nipple, he found a lump there. Mm-hmm. What's up? Uh, one day I decided to pierce my nipple, and then it you was found sore. a lump. It was sore for about three days. Mm-hmm. And you know, a lump uh, developed in response to you having pierced yourself. I guess. No. Like. Okay, four weeks later, it came. It was there. And All right. Another, That's a puberty thing. It it may be scar tissue or infection for what you did with the piercing. But what happens, like, then four weeks later, my other nipple did it, and All I right. haven't touched that one. All right, so that's that's probably just gynecomastia, we call that, from puberty. Uh, also, smoking a lot of pot will cause that. Mm-hmm. It's usually something that goes away spontaneously by itself. It's usually a little younger, like 13, 14, but it can certainly happen at your age. It'll be gone by 16, 17, typically. Sometimes it can be quite big and actually have to be removed surgically, but it's not a tumor or anything like that. doesn't mean there's necessarily anything wrong from an endocrinologic standpoint for you. It's a normal like, phenomenon. Well, really, it hurts a lot. So is that supposed to, like... Yep. Just, just if see your doctor, if it becomes real tender or, or real swollen. All right. But it's a common thing, and it's a normal thing. But just to be safe, and um, I'm working under the um, impression that he may have caused this by the piercing. Don't pierce your nose. You get a brain tumor. Mm. Wouldn't that make sense? Yeah, but I've smoked, like, no pot either. You don't smoke pot? So it's just a normal thing for you. You don't need medication? How do you cope with the pain? Um, it's kind of like it goes away and it comes back. Mm-hmm. True. Shouldn't he have a check down? Yeah, they typically hurt, though. Shouldn't he have a uh, mammogram? No. <laughs> I've done mammograms on males before. You have? Yeah. Oh, that's got to be a humiliating yeah. experience. <laughs> In fact, I'm, I'm planning one for you, big guy. <laughs> does it, it, the mammogram, I mean, does the guy really screw? Wish his chest between those two plates of glass so it can be if filmed. If there's enough of a problem there, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. If you have you done it with the big fat guys? Yeah. Were they like white? And did they cry? I don't they know. They cried. I wasn't actually. Like the ladies. No, oh, you weren't in the room. No. Technician does that. Mm. Oh, for Christ's sake! I was sitting around listening to that uh, god awful. Um, uh, MRI you put me through. Listening. Oh, the bang, 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 bang. Yes, yeah. I'm gonna. I still want to kill you for that. Drew made, made, made me go to this quack buddy of his for my hand problem. The guy shoved me into a, a trash can and then beat it with a wooden spoon. He called it an MRI, but I think it was just some form of torture. I came out and I admitted to a bunch of things <laughs> I hadn't done. I claim responsibility for the Oklahoma Federal Building. Oh, boy. All right. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm going to see if I can fix my mood. I'm, I'm pretty pissed because Drew and I have to get up at 630 tomorrow it, morning. I, was I not right about that? You were a little bit tested. Come on. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. We're going to bring the band in. We'll be back. Loveline's phone. All right. Phone number eight. It's Loveline. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. Fax number 310 854 4455. Sergio Juan, Fernando, and Alex are all here from Manat. Now, this is a band. Well, actually, they sold 10 million records, this band. Two gold records in the United States. Uh, the current record's gone gold. Sold out the uh, amphitheater. For three nights, I'm going to be at the Pond October 
the 10th. Now, wait, is that, when the, uh, is that when you're at the pond, or is that when the tickets go on sale? No, the tickets go on sale Whoops. Saturday. Oops, hang on, Mike. No, it's, it's on. You just got to lean into that, Hello? Mike. All right. No, it's not. Oh, there no, it is. There you go. Okay, thanks. Sorry. Uh, this Saturday, uh, the tickets go on sale, so, yeah, it, we're, we're very happy. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. You know, the, the, uh, it seems uh, to me, well, I can tell you personally, and we're in a lot of parts of the country, and some of this is going on in some parts of the country, and some of it isn't, but uh, I've lived in uh, the L.A. area my whole life, and um, the Latin population in L.A. has gone through the roof. For oh, instance, yeah. I went to North Hollywood High. I graduated North Hollywood High in 1982, that theoretically. And I think the Latin population at that time, if that school was probably about 18 to 20 percent, somewhere around there. I think it's about, can you be over 100, Drew, or is that wrong mathematically? I think it's about 85 to 90 percent Latino now in that school. And, I've, you know, I've been, I've been gone 15, 18 years, but it's not been 100 years. I mean, this it's, is fast. It's incredible. Right now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's about like 26 million uh, Latinos living in the United States. So uh, that has a lot to do with why our band Mana has been, you know, so successful here in the States. Yeah, I used to make fun of Latinos, but I've, I've rethought this. I'm now joining them. I'd like to join the band. I'm going to play one of those fish. You know, those big wooden fish? <laughs> a guido. Let's call it a guido. Yeah, I'll play the guido. I'll be the Italian guy playing the guido. That's very ironic. But I mean, I, I've looked at what's going on. The uh, the radio, the, the top two radio stations in L.A. are uh, Hispanic. I don't know what it's like in New York or Miami or whatever, they're, they're but I just, imagine it's they're, going they're, on there. Monolingual Spanish speaking, right? They're not just Hispanic music. It's yeah. monolingual Spanish, and that's not number one, number two stations in this town. Right. And if you think uh, Mexicans talk fast, tune into that station yeah. and listen to a guy selling stereos for a commercial. <laughs> so that's like. <laughs> I don't even know what the guy, I don't even, I don't speak, I wouldn't understand him anyway, but uh, I, I bet even if I worked for Belitz, I wouldn't be able to do it. But So, what do you want, how long has the band been around? There's a good question. I'm, I'm addressing this mainly to Alex because he speaks the most English of the band, but if, if any of you guys want to jump in, jump in at any time. Okay, well, the band has been together for 12 years. We were formed in 1986. Uh, we have five albums out right now. Uh, and it's just been a, a long, uh, a long trip up to where we are now. You know, uh, we struggled like any other band. Uh, I can say uh, this band broke internationally in 1993, and uh, right now Mana is heard in more than 22 countries. Uh, and uh, we're, we're right now in the middle of a year-long tour. So um, our tour starts this 21st of August. Mm -hmm. We start here in Los Angeles, like you mentioned. Uh, we got the three sold-out shows at the Universal. We're gonna be all over the United States. We're gonna do. 34 shows in 30 cities. What are the big cities? Do you know? I mean, yes. obviously, uh, Miami. We're going to Miami, Boston, New York, New York uh, all of Texas. But is Boston a... a Boston. We're that's a big Boston. town for you guys? Yes, because you have a lot of kids from Latin America Cuban. studying in different college, colleges. Ah, and, big college town, uh, yeah. Yes, and we're, we have, you know, a big uh, fan following in colleges because there's mm -hmm. a lot of kids studying from all over Latin America here in the States. Uh, you know, we're going all over California. We're going to Canada. Uh, Chicago. Now uh, Canada. Now, how do you get? How do you get the? Um, uh, there much many Spanish speaking yes. people. They don't speak English in, well, there's in a Canada. Lot of, there's a huge Latin community in, in really? Canada. Yeah, we're surprised also. <laughs> they don't speak. Oh. Wait, explain to me the correlation between not speaking English and not having Hispanic. I mean, citizens. they barely speak English. It's all that you know and a and uh, oh, I see. Oop, and, <laughs> I you know. See. I can't understand yeah. those people. But the, I know. I, I think of. I think of them as the whitest of all people. I see. I see. Some so guy, I, yeah. you know, curling or ice fishing. He's uh, he's drinking. He's got a big Malamute dog. He's shooting a moose. I, I don't picture. I, I can't picture that. When I picture uh, land music, I picture hot climates. Yes. Picture uh, chicks walking around with those uh, you know, thong back bathing suits yeah. and everyone drunk. Yes. I don't, I, actually, in Canada, everyone's drunk, but they're wearing parkas in case so they we, fall into we, the river. In Canada, it's beautiful. So for us, it's going to be very interesting because we're going to go there and like plant the seed. You know, Mana is a band that loves to work, that loves to play. Uh, we've always been in it for the music and not for the fame and fortune. So it's going to be really great for us to go down there and and just play and try to conquer, you know, the people in Canada. What do you think about Menudo getting back together? That sucks. <laughs> Drew's into Menudo. Drew was one of the original members. I found out he was white and I kicked him out when he was 15. Drew, did you hear about this? No. Menudo's getting back together. I'm delighted. <laughs> Perfect. Drew didn't even know Seinfeld. Yeah, you know, there's, yeah. a, there's a very, um, uh, it's very funny, but there's like this total, did. huge misconception of what's going on in Latin America <laughs> as far as rock and Espanol. 
And uh, it's so great to see like uh, the media starting to become a lot more interested because there's thousands of bands from Mexico all the way down to Argentina and the Caribbean that are doing so many interesting things. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really great that, that you know, uh, a lot of uh, the Anglo media is giving uh, bands like us and these other bands opportunity to, to express ourselves artistically and to come down here and to show what we got, you know. Well, like I said, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's the future. I swear to God. You you better uh, you better get on board because that is what's going on, especially in uh, this part of the country. I don't know what's going on in um, Nebraska, the, Nebraska, but certainly in in Los Angeles. I mean that is uh, the the train is leaving. All right, Drew. Yeah. yeah. Why don't we take a call? Then we'll hear a song. Yeah. Want to do that? Yeah. All right. So anyway, guys, jump in, even if you do it in Spanish. Thomas. Uh yes. You're 17. Yes. What's going on? Okay, uh, w when I'm fornicating uh, oh. with my woman, her lubrication levels do not reach a level. Hold on a second. <laughs> El Humpo. <laughs> this is this is a this is a. W w I need an interpreter for this. But this is the guy that uh, who's the guy who said that live we had, uh, Mr. The Slick. Uh, oh yeah, I can't remember his name. Don't do that to me, Drew. No, yes, not Tim yes. Meadows. He did the what's oh, the character oh, he plays? Oh, oh, yay. yeah. He, he plays uh, the uh, love guy. Right, with the, it's Thomas. Yeah, ladies, 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 ladies man. True. <laughs> Engineer Mike, uh, Mike, you got to host this show. I you know, swear no, to God. I'm just going to address everything to you, Mike. Okay. Yeah, don't yeah. ask me. Forget about Ann. Adam, forget. Sure. It. Be quiet, Riddler. Thomas. Yes. All right, go ahead and ask your question. Uh, yes. Uh, well, her lubrication levels do not reach a, a level where I'm comfortable having intercourse. And I was wondering if there was some sort of technique we could use, to, you know, to increase the lubrication or, or something like that. I see by the Cavassier bottle that we're out of time. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. All right, what can he do? I'm going to put him on hold because uh, he's probably a bogus call. But, uh, it's a uh, bogus call. What can you do to get the juices flowing? This uh, foreplay? Yeah, have his girlfriend, uh, be in love with his girlfriend. And let her know, and let her know that that's how you feel. Oh, that ain't gonna happen. All right, let's squeeze in one more call. I didn't buy that call. Yeah, it was not real. Alex, can you hear with those headphones yeah, around your ponytail? Yeah, of course. You all right? Yeah. Okay. Ready. You guys got the uh, there's a volume knob down there somewhere. You can you can adjust it. Allison. Hi. Hey, you're 16. Yep. You're on with Mana. Cool. Ten million records, sweepy. Cool. Why What's I'm going joining on? up with them, Allison. Um, I'm 16, and I'm going to be a sophomore in college next wow. year. Wow. Where are you in college? Um, at the University of Washington. That's incredible. She started at 15. What are yep, you studying? I just finished my first year. What are you studying? Are you ceramics major? Um, I'm pre-med. Oh, boy. Oh, pre-med. Wow. I just, um, I'm taking biology next year and O-chem, too. Oh, man. Yep. Are you doing organic chemistry already? Um, no, I'm, I'm taking it next year. I see. Uh, I pulled some uh, salsa out of my... I was thinking of organic chemistry when I pulled... I opened up a salsa container that had been in my refrigerator for seven years today. Uh, it almost exploded. <laughs> yeah, it was in there when I bought the fridge. It's inorganic chemistry. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, Allison, so what's the question? Um, Congratulations. I know, so. I know you guys kind of, like, frown upon relationships between people who are my age and college-age people. Um but I was wondering, like, since these people are my peers, like 18 or 19 year olds, right. do you consider that appropriate? I mean, uh, I don't want to go out with, like, a 22 year old. Right. It's, we've actually had this question before, and you're right at the threshold where it becomes appropriate. You've actually even had 14 year olds call in who are in college and wondering how to handle it. And it's, in fact, a reason that a 14 year old perhaps shouldn't go to college. But we usually to... address the opposite, which is I'm 27, but I'm really stupid. Yeah, I'd like usually, to go out with a 14 year old. And she knows that. She knows. But here's Allison, who, who is a mature individual a healthy individual who's wondering is there is that age difference going to make that much difference or because we are peers is it okay and i think certainly with an eight, 19 20 year old you are in fact peer and i think it's reasonable as long as you proceed carefully well, okay because i still like hang out with high schoolers and stuff and i've gone out with them but okay what do you have a genius I, iq um i don't know you never got it measured well i did but my parents never told me what it was uh oh yeah they, they thought you tried to take over the world uh, how do you excel? How do you make your way? And, and I'm going I'm to make sure everyone knows what this girl went to high school. She graduated three or four years early. She's I already actually didn't go to high school. Oh, that was the deal. Um, 
I went from middle school, and there's this one year called the transition school, and it's supposed to like prepare you for college. So it's sort of like high school in one year, but wow. it's not really high school. Is this something the University of Washington has? Yes, it's a they it's a program they've had for about 20 years, and they take like 16 kids a year to do it. Oh, fantastic! It's like a gifted child. Yeah, yeah. right. But it was super gifted. Yeah, that's great. I don't hear any um, uh, Asian accent though. <laughs> What's going on with that? What's your nationality? I'm Irish. Really? Yep. Uh, something's going to happen. you start drinking soon. And nope. The wheels will come off the wagon. Nope. Wow. What do your parents do? My dad's a pilot and my mom stays home. She used to be a flight attendant. Wow. All right. But hey, if I were Allison, I would wear a helmet. You know what I mean? To protect, this protect super, her head? Yeah, most of our listeners should just wear a cup. <laughs> just something to protect their groin. It's a really morons. Uh, we really have the world's dumbest uh, listening audience. Well, actually, the people who listen may not be dumb, but certainly the people they pick to call in are really stupid, like the, the caller before this. But this Allison, she has like a super, super brain. She should really wear like a Coleman ice chest on her head with two uh, holes poked in it so she could see, and, and a chin strap. Oh, imagine that. I was a ceramics major in high school, barely graduated. Think what you were doing at 15. Oh. <laughs> When I was 15, I failed biology. They never let me take biology again. I never learned a language. And I never, and I had to argue with someone about this the other day, I never took any math higher than math. I took math through high school. I never took algebra. Most people took algebra in like the 8th or ninth grade. Right. Drew, you're on to a trig by the time you're in 7th grade, right? Little jackass. All right. <laughs> I've had enough of this, Drew. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's, let's play a song, huh? All right, let's do that. I'm going to pronounce this one because uh, who was that? Miss, uh, what is her name? Miss Valdivia? It was, it's ironic that you guys are in here and we're talking about high school because I didn't have enough units to graduate uh, my senior year of high school unless I passed my Spanish final. Oh, my God. And I was uh, not passing the class. And I was one of the few people I knew who could attend every day of class. I didn't cut class. I didn't sit in the bathroom and smoke pot and then go, go to the swimming hall. I showed, up at the cl I showed up at class. And I would still fail the class. And it always killed me that I got the same grade as the guy who never showed up. <laughs> but the point is, is I was failing Spanish. And Miss Valdivia, or whatever her that witch's name was, said... You have to pass this final. It is two days before graduation, and if you don't pass the final, you'll not graduate. You'll not pass the class. Therefore, you'll not graduate high school. Now, as it turns out, I never needed my high school diploma because I started cleaning carpets and I started construction. And I started radio, where they hold it against you. Don't they hold a, a diploma against you in radio, Drew? It seems like you it when I talk to the yeah, people. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's it's considered you're considered a pariah if you have over 105 IQ in radio. Believe me, or you're not a coke addict. But the the, the deal is is I I passed by copying over the Asian woman's uh, shoulder who sat in front of me. I copied her verbatim, and she was an A student. I got a D on the final. I know Miss Valdivia went. Yeah, I know he copied, but I'm just going to pass him anyway. Well, but that was, uh, that was nice of her on her behalf. She was all right. I wasn't fine. I wasn't a big fan of hers. She can kiss my ass, by the way. She's making thirty thousand dollars a year and living in that crappy North Hollywood. All right. So now, in 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 her honor, though, I'm Go going. I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of the uh, Manas song. Let's see. Un lobo por tu amor. You got it. Ah, that would be Manas, and that. Oh, well, let me get the name of the record uh, worked in here. Sueños Líquidos. That means... Liquid Dreams. That's what I had the other night. Oh, <laughs> I wish I could muster one of those. <laughs> you have to not masturbate for how long, Drew? How long do you think I would have to not More masturbate? More than four hours. I mean. Oh, really? Yeah, so Out yeah. of the question. Yeah. Out of the question. It's not worth it, then. All right, got to go masturbate now, and then we're going to come back and uh, finish talking to the boys. You have five seconds. Love. Drew are all uh, here. Mana is the name of the band. They've uh, sold themselves uh, 10 million records worldwide. They have a couple of gold records out here in the United States. Sold out the uh, amphitheater, so I'm never going to tell you the dates. But uh, they are going to be at the Anaheim Pond, and the uh, tickets go on sale this Saturday. So um, seeing as how the amphitheater sold out three nights in a row, you may want to go out and get those tickets, because uh, that may sell out as well. And what's the pond? Uh, the uh, amphitheater holds like uh, 65, 6,800, and the uh, pond is uh, what, 18,000 or something I think like it's, that? Uh, it's 12 or 13,000. Oh, 12 or 13. 
All right. You better get those tickets then. I just remember Chick Hearn talking about the forum. What would Chick say? 17505. Oh, really? <laughs> remember that from high school. And the uh, mustard's off the hot dog? That's right. I had, I had a surreal experience. I, I did an award ceremony, a sports award ceremony. Uh -huh. he, got, and he got a special award and he got sick there. I had to attend to him. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That was you great. attended to Chick? Yeah. What'd you do to him? I can't tell you, you now. Put your finger in him? No. no what do you mean? What do you mean? He got sick. What kind of sick? I, I really can't tell you. Why can't you tell me? Stomach sick. Well, don't bring it up then. Who cares? What do you do? Throw up a basketball pump or something? Yes, a pump. What'd you do to him? Just, just took care of him. He OD'd? No, he's fine. <laughs> he's fine. But it's surreal. OD. Chick Hearn's OD. You know, let me tell you something about Chick Hearn. Chick Hearn is the voice of the Lakers. He has been for 20 years out here, or maybe 25, maybe 120 years. I, I remember from high school. <clears throat> There's nobody better uh, than Chick Hearn in the, in the business, although he's getting a little bit old and probably should head out. But the thing that I fe thought was a total BS maneuver is Chick Hearn has this string going, or had this string going of consecutive games that he'd announced for the Lakers. Uh, you know, 10 million games in a row he'd announced, right? Well, one night or one week, he had a horrible illness. I mean, he really couldn't announce the game. No. But in order to keep the string alive, they wheeled him in. Oh. He leaned into the mic and he went, Burp. <laughs> He went, Worthy's in the popcorn machine. And then he handed the mic off to another guy and he finished the entire game. Now I think to myself, no, that's BS. Well, see, the, the string is broken, Chick. I'm sorry. You farting into the microphone uh, from your deathbed is, uh, on, one, on one game does not keep the string going. Am, am I right, Drew? I is that right. just so much Hollywood BS? Yeah. They wheel him in. He says he calls uh, one play and then goes home and gets hooked up back to the IV. <laughs> Recoculous. All right. Ready to go? Let's go. Bill. Yeah. You're 25. How you guys doing? Good. What are you doing? Hey, I, I need some advice from you guys. Uh, my dad was a very abusive guy. When I was five years old, uh, I had to witness my sister being molested by my dad. Mm. And, uh, it was sexually abused. Yes. Uh, sodomized and everything. How old were you? I was five. Oh, it's so bizarre. It's just, uh, and, uh, how, how, do you, um, how do you witness that, though? I mean, doesn't he toss you out of the, the room? No, it was actually in the living room. And I tried to stop him several times, but, you know, of course, I was only five. How old was the sister? Uh, she was seven at the time. Oh, my God. It's just, it's just mind-boggling. And, uh, you know, I, of course, I couldn't stop him. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, as a result, you know, I went through a pretty uh, thrash of tri uh, teenage years and and uh, got, eventually got into some counseling as I became an adult. Was he on drugs, your dad? I don't think so. I, didn't, I think he was in a, he was an alcoholic very bad. Right, so he was an alcoholic. Were you, were you an alcoholic? Uh, no. Or are you? Okay. I used to smoke pot to kind of uh, just kind of yeah. Get too bad out. your dad didn't smoke pot. No, I know Drew's one of these guys, you know, who thinks all drugs are the same. But I can tell you, you get drunk and you go, I think I'll sodomize my daughter. You get stoned, you go, oh, I'll sodomize her later. I want to watch you in a Night Rider. Then the A team's on. Then sodomy. But then a a after that, uh, George Papard's bosom running. Body. Yeah, bosom body starts and you forget about it. Fall asleep on the sofa. Anyway, uh, my counselor. Um, told me to as part of therapy to face my fears is to i know where he i know where he is now because we got away from him when i was uh about 10 we moved away from him and uh i know where he is now well he says i should go back to him and confront him as an adult to get away you know get rid of my fears and how all how long have you been in therapy for about two years how's your sister doing by oh. the way my, you know my sister never even had therapy or nothing and she's had four kids and Ooh. That's she's, bad. she's very stable. She's a mm. sheriff's technician, and, and mm. she carries a gun. No, no, she just uh, works in a prison. Does she? Oof, oof. <laughs> How, well, who's the guy she chose to settle down with, though? Uh, he's a deputy sheriff, mm. and he's he's very very stable. Keep an eye on them. I will keep a very close eye on them. I try. Does she discuss this with you, or has she ever talked about it? It's it's hard for us to discuss because she gets like flashbacks of it. Yeah. And I I've tried to talk to her before, no. but uh, she doesn't really want to. All right. So the to. question is, should you confront your dad? Yeah, because I think it's going to cause some ruckus. What about reporting your dad? What about really uh, following this all the way through? Well, it's twenty two years later. I don't know that there's a statute of limitation on this act. Well, I mean, it'd be hard to prove, of course, but I mean, I, I, who knows who else or what else he's doing out there. That's what I'm worried. I'm worried about, uh, the thing I'm worried about is if I 
go to him and I see that he's with another family and oh, the same boy. situation and, one, and what happens what's if he, I lose it, you know? Yeah. What's he do, sell insurance now? I don't I don't know what he does exactly, but he was always a con man back in the day. And did you have a history of violence yourself? Um, I did. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I had. That's why I went into counseling because I'm married and and uh, mm. my wife gave me a look one time and I and I blew up and I didn't know where I was or anything and oh, when I came back to reality, you know, she said, "Hey, what were you doing?" And I, and uh, this, well, by the way, is why I want these guys prosecuted. Not only for what they did, but for what they created and then cut loose on the world. This guy Bill, when he had a few beers in him ten eight years ago, could have killed you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was all all because of Dad. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I I'm much better now. <laughs> yeah, you no. sound good. You know. Oh boy. Bill, I, I I would be very careful with this confrontation. I mean, I, I always I I'm just always a little concerned about this uh, sense that it being important to confront your abuser. I don't I don't know that it accomplishes that much. Uh, remember we had Tom Arnold in here talking about his experience of going in and uh, confronting his abuser, and it didn't didn't do much for him. And I, and so much of what happens is something that's internal and not a reality <laughs> experience, or nothing to do with the present, or it's nothing to do with that person right. per se. However, I don't want to I don't want to contradict what your therapist is telling you. So if they're saying it's important in your case, make sure you do it in a very structured way. Maybe go over there with a couple other guys or some people you trust who can contain the situation. Okay. And I would suggest you discuss it with the authorities, the police first, to see if they have some suggestions on how this ought to be managed. It, you know, it seems like it would work. It seems logical, but every time I've seen someone do this, they're more upset when they're done, and they didn't feel like they got... See, the problem is, is you don't get the satisfaction you think you're going to get. You go confront the guy, and the guy says, No, I never did that. You're nuts. Yeah. Or, uh, so I was drunk. Yeah. It's none of your business. Yeah. I told her I was sorry. She get out of here. Yeah. You walk away feeling like confused and hurt. Now you're more angry. You didn't say what you wanted to say. Yeah. You're driving home and you're thinking all the stuff you should have said. The person denied it. I mean, let's let's face it. Here's the problem with confronting your abuser. You're confronting somebody who sodomized their own daughter when she was seven. You know what I mean? So you're not getting a real sympathetic ear necessarily. Right. Oh, no, you're going to talk to a sick person. You're talking to a sick person. You're arguing with a crazy person who may either turn it back on you and somehow or just deny is, it. is that you want dad back. You want this image of your dad to reconnect with you in a loving way. And that's the real fact. It's just not going to work. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'll tell you who's going to answer the door. The guy who uh, played uh, the dad in the Rockford Files. <laughs> what, was, what was his name? Remember remember uh, Rockford's dad? I, I'm thinking more about the Rodney Dangerfield as the dad in Natural Born Killers. That, that's what you're going to open the door. Or, or just Rodney Dangerfield. I, I don't, I don't know a lot of if anyone has uh, met Rodney Dangerfield, but uh, he he pretty much just a guy who wears a uh, an erection, a pair of jockey shorts, and a house coat anyway, and is a uh, fairly foul tempered, mean, and evil guy. Really, uh, that character he played on Natural Born Kills that that was him. It really was. I, I've met the man a few times. It really was. Okay, what do you want to do, Drew? We got to go to break. Go to break. Can you guys hang out for a couple more questions? There's a couple things up here. Now oh, oh, you didn't get any questions for Manon. Hey, I got one question in here. Well, you're oh, so much. Oh, please. We have a question for the band. Can you wait a few minutes after the break? Yeah, yeah the band was going to leave at 11, but uh, they got questions. That's all right. We'll talk to them. Love Line. Be right back in a minute. Look at that. Dooley right on top of his game as usual. Okay, we're going to take a little 10 second station identification. We'll be right back with the fabulous Love Line. This is Love Line on Radio Station. KROQ FM, Pasadena, Los Angeles. The world famous K Rock. Sueños Liquidos. Hey, that was good. That's very good. I think that was pretty good. Manaz, the name of the band, sold uh, millions of records uh, worldwide. And, uh, well, I think they've sold about a million, or at least a million here stateside, too. They uh, sold out the uh, amphitheater, and they're going to uh, soon sell out the pond and, um, out here in Anaheim, California. And the tickets go on sale this Saturday. So uh, if you want to go see the band and uh, find out what all the buzz is about, go get those tickets uh, this Saturday. All right, Drew? Go. We'll take a few more uh, questions. You have for one the for the uh, band? We have three for the band. Yeah. Oh, I see. Jackie? Yeah. You're 15? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, my gosh. 
I love you guys. You guys are my favorite group. First of all, I want you to know that. I want to say hi to Fernando, Sergio, Alex, and Juan. And I've got, I believe I have all your records. And my question is, um, are you planning to make any more records? I mean, any future records? That, I don't know. <laughs> you, just want, you just want to talk to the band, right? They're going to kill themselves yeah, after that. today. You can uh, talk to other guys in Spanish, too, if you, if you want, because they're not... It's okay. Engaged, yeah. yeah it could be their English or Spanish. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, well, the band, uh, well, first of all, thanks for calling. Uh, this is this is really great to be on this station. And, uh, to Who am I speaking to, first of all? Uh, this is Alex, the drummer. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, you know, as long as uh, we're healthy and uh, we keep enjoying ourselves doing what we're doing, yeah, Mana's going to be putting out more albums in the future. A lot of people have been asking us, when are we going to do this so-called famous crossover of, uh, you know, singing something in English? Uh, I really don't see the band in, uh, right now doing anything in English, but we have spoken about it maybe in the future to do a couple of tracks in English just to broaden a little bit more the market here in the States, but uh, you know, we're going to stick to our Spanish uh, rock and roll and uh, you know, we're just very happy to be down here in LA and uh, and all the people that are listening to us across the nation, we're going to be uh, playing all over the United States, so it's going to be really great to see all you cats down there. Jackie? Yeah? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Fillmore. And oh yeah, no, that's, that's Mexico. No. <laughs> Believe me, that's Mexico. And like you're like really popular especially in my school like we listen to your you, we actually listen to your CDs you know during Spanish class I mean that's how cool you are. that's a good way to learn Spanish <laughs> yeah <laughs> Wait, guys, our teacher is actually thinking of teaching us one of your songs Jackie what nationality are you you're Spanish yeah I'm, I'm yeah. Mexican yeah and what do you need Spanish class for well, because... I mean, we take English but that's to learn to read and write but well, you we take it to enforce our language you know to to better learn it, because just because we speak it and we can write it, we don't write it totally... That's that, that, nonsense. That, that's no fact. Yeah, that's they that's don't have that. It is. They do, do they have that? Yeah, of course they do. Spanish literature, yeah. No, no, no but I, I mean... I, <laughs> they don't, that's I know not the course she's talking about, exists, though. But they don't have that at Silmar High. They, oh, don't have, okay. they don't have Spanish lit. I just want to let everybody know I'm going to San Fernando High School, because I'm, sh I'm sure my friends are listening, and they're going to be like, Oh, my gosh, I see what's wrong. Oh, you don't go to Silmar? You go to San Fernando? No, I go to San Fernando High School. Well, wow, I thought they have a Silmar. Hi. It's a school. Silmar, but it sucks. Yay! Okay, right. baby. San That's Fernando right. is a bomb. All right. All right, Jackie. Go uh, Tigers, right? Hell yeah. yeah. Go Tigers. That's right. They used to kick our ass in football each <laughs> year. I remember the name of that team. Some guy with a tiger on the side of his helmet kicking my ass down the field. <laughs> Silmar, though, we could beat them. We could beat them in football, but not in baseball. Those, okay. uh, those Mexicans know how to play baseball. They haven't figured out the football part yet. But uh, baseball, they could play, I'll tell you. Ma what Maria, is it? Maria. Maria. Oh, um, hi. Um, I just want to say hi to Mana. And you're like my total like, favorite band. You like, you're the one that got me into liking Spanish rock. And I just want to tell you I love you. And hi, everybody. Where are you calling oh. from? L.A. What high school did you go to? I'm going to high school still. Oh, okay. What high school? To, um, Hillcrest High School. Hillcrest. Hillcrest. Don't know that one. Oh yeah, um, and I want to ask them if they could sing. Um, a little part of Oye Mi Amor, please. <laughs> That's like my favorite song in the world. I always listen to that song, like, every day. Can you sing a little a cappella? We got a, an, a terrible hangover. hangover. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> no. They were, uh, they were out drinking last night. Oh, I just want to say, I love you. You're like my best, like, favorite, favorite band in the world. Are you wasting the taxpayers' money by taking <laughs> Spanish as well? Hello? <laughs> Maria, thanks for the call. All right, I think it'd be all right if Maria took Spanish. <laughs> or she'd certainly take English. Uh, Mar is that Marvin? Yes. Marvin, you're 18. It's your eyes yeah, check. What's up, guys? I How love you, Joey. It's the angle. Thank you. Hey, um, I would like to say, Mana, you, you, you're bad. I mean, you're my favorite group. You're, in, you're the only reason I listen to Spanish rock. And I like this nature because you guys, like, respect nature a lot. And Oh, yeah, that's right. I wanted to talk about Rainforest that. Rainforest stuff. Yeah, I'll let yeah. you finish what you wanted to say, though, Marvin, and then we'll talk to him about the Greenpeace stuff. Yeah, you see, like, I like it because I'm from El Salvador, and, yes, I did take Spanish <laughs> in high school. I'm from Jefferson High, and, yeah, I like the band. They're great. I like Fair because, you know, it's like, he's the baddest, and, I mean, the group's the greatest. But I just like to say that you guys are doing a great job, and I'm, like, I'm your number one fan, and... I couldn't go to the concert because when I got there, the tickets were sold out. But yeah, but you could buy a ticket this Saturday and see them at the pond. I can't because I'm going to go to college, and I'm far away from home. Where are you going to go to college? Humboldt State. Oh, that's all you need. You're going to be smoking pot. You're not going to remember that four years. <laughs> Forget about four years, that eight years. <laughs> you're trying to... right. you really? You're going to Humboldt State? Yeah, Humboldt State. All right. 
Put a bad, what, what battery in <laughs> that smoke alarm behind you, eh? Yeah? No, I think they're playing basketball. No, nah, I like them doing it. It's a smoke alarm thing. chirping. Is that a smoke alarm chirping in the background? Who? Oh, no, nah, in the house. All right. <laughs> no, I just like to say that my mom's the greatest, and hey, keep up the good work, and I'm proud of you guys, man. You you guys kick ass. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Hey, let, let's talk about the um, environment for just a second, because that's something I forgot about. Your your people were telling me that you guys are in with Greenpeace, that you started your own uh, organization, and uh, continue that thought. Yeah, well, it's an organization that we uh, founded. That's called um, Black Forest Selva Negra, and. Uh, We've been doing a lot of stuff with Greenpeace, um, and like for example, one thing that we've been doing recently is that we have 80 kilometers of beach uh, on uh, Jalisco, which is the state we're from, and uh, we're protecting uh, this turtle that's uh, almost extinct. We have two turtle camps, so we've rescued about 40,000 turtle eggs because there's this myth that turtle eggs are aphrodisiac, you know, and it's not yeah. true. So, you know, people are with <laughs> this, you know, hell? it's really crazy. So you got protect- Japanese in Mexico who are going after those turtle eggs or yeah. those Mexicans so, going um, after the turtle eggs? We're, we're, we're very happy that Greenpeace is, you know, um, um, working with us. We're setting up modules uh, inside the shows and outside so people can sign up and, and do something for the environment. Also, we just, uh, we're also going to be doing stuff with Amnesty International here in the States. Also right. defending because we're very involved in the human rights issue. So uh, it's just amazing, you know, see how many kids are worried about it, especially in Latin America with all the things that are going on with the rainforest and stuff. Right. Well, it, it'd be nice to uh, get this revived. I don't want to do anything personally, but I think it'd be great if everyone else could rally behind this cause. Because if you think about what's going on, I mean, uh, Mexico City is one of the, sm- I think, the smoggiest city. The most polluted city in the world. Or most polluted uh, city in the world. And then uh, they had all these fires in Mexico, and, and that caused a bunch of trouble. But the, the rainforest, the, the, tur- the turtles with the aphrodisiacs, I don't know why it is that the people... I know uh, they go for the bare pancreas, the um, the uh, Japanese, rich Japanese guys. They go for the ground-up rhino horn. I don't know why they couldn't pick a dog or a cat. They have the to deal. pick a very exotic, endangered animal, Please, and then they have to go for that. It's not they. It's only the male of the species. Yeah, right? it's of only course. it's only oh, Japanese man, Mexican man now who Peru? want to control women and raise their you know their their sexual arousal in ways that they can't themselves. Yeah, right. In Peru, what they're doing now is they're um, yanking off um, frog skin and they're making it like this uh, malt this uh, shake and it's ridiculous you know they say it's a fruity sex so, uh, there's a lot of problems in Latin America <laughs> I don't know why um, see here in the United States we're smart we just pay some big drug company like Pfizer or, or Upjohn they cook up something in the lab and then we take the pill after they're all done with it but we don't go around eating eating uh, goat hoof and stuff like that to try to get a boner <laughs> I can't figure this stuff out you know, I mean, I could understand, well, there's the rhino. It's a pretty big, tough-looking, virile animal. And there's that big horn. It really looks like a big ivory penis at the end of this, uh, you know, 5,000-pound animal. There you go. But then grounding it up and eating it. I mean, what? Uh, that's something you would do in some sort of primitive culture where you, that looked like yeah, you got to have almost, you have to have the mentality of a, of a retard. You really uh, do. Of, of, a, of a, right, of a real primitive. Here's what it is. It's like when an airplane flies over your head and you hold your hand up two feet in front of your head and it's, completely obscured the airplane. That's the size of the it's airplane. It's like saying the airplane must be as big as my hand. It's yeah. that sort of retarded mentality. You know, and it's also funny that, you know, you see so many people complaining about El Nino and complaining about all, how the temperatures have risen. And all that's caused because of what we're doing to the environment. So, you know, people have to start taking more care of Mother Nature for the future I, uh, generations. You know? I totally agree. They, they have some uh, folks that say the uh, greenhouse effect does not exist, but this... Um, the summer disproves that. <laughs> no, and, and, and this is the same thing as the, the guys, uh, the, uh, in, the scientists that the tobacco agencies hired about 20 years ago to say that nicotine was not addictive. It's the same kind of slanted, jaded science. There's an agenda. There's some, uh, and, and it's done by the right wing out here. I don't know why. And don't give me that surprise look, Drew. It's a Republican maneuver. There's two arguments. One is the greenhouse doesn't exist. And number two is maybe it exists, but isn't that a good thing? I mean, after it all, we're living in a greenhouse. You know what I mean? Mm. You, you, you start a greenhouse, you can grow sprouts and strawberries in the, in the winter. Wouldn't that be uh, fantastic? Fantastic. Never heard that. And Drew didn't know that all the cows farting caused the greenhouse effect, too. I swear to God, Drew, this is a real phenomenon. Methane production. you got to start reading. 
All right. Uh, are we, we, uh, the band, I know the band wanted to leave at 11. You want to take another call, and then we'll break early, and we'll... Uh, we'll uh, can we take a bid, bid, Oh, we're going to play a song. Yeah. All right, well, why don't we do that, then? We'll play a song right now. Right. Okay. Uh-oh. Go for I it. I swear to God, I see the word hammer written in Mexico. Oh, no, nail. Clavos. Isn't that nails? Clavado. Well, it's a way of saying stuck. Oh, really? Yeah, clavado. Is uh, interesting, because, yeah. uh, you know, I worked in construction all these years. you got to know how to say... Hammer, nail, and clean up. And uh, the lunch truck's here. I think those are all the things I learned to say. But uh, it, it's funny that the word stuck also is, is, is like the word for nail. Makes sense. Yeah, it does. Stuck in a bar, clavado en un bar. Trapped in a bar. Here it is. That's uh, Mana. And that's, uh, that sounds like the knack at the end there. Manak. Manak. <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of the band. All right. Ten million records, everybody. Uh, the Pond is where uh, you'll find them uh, next. The tickets uh, that is not sold out, at least, uh, out here in the uh, Los Angeles area, Southern California. The tickets go on sale this Saturday. And you guys are going out around the country, and then uh, you'll be back. Is that is that fair to say? Yes, we'll be uh, traveling all over the United States and uh, in Canada. And we, uh, we finished the tour back here in Los Angeles. So we start here, and we finish here, which is great. Right. And uh, then you uh, buy some green cards and stay here, get a job down in the <laughs> garment industry. Uh, that would be fun. No, uh, we, we right. go back to uh, Latin America. We go to Spain. Then we uh, oh. do a second round of South America and, uh, and uh, Central America and Mexico. So. Oh, what a life. What a life you guys have out saving the rainforest. Hey, well, you guys can come out with us anytime you want. I want to play that fish. <laughs> the Guido. You got to yeah. remember that. Guido. The Guido. Guido. <laughs> yeah. How can you forget that? I was going to call it the Paisan or the Guinea or something. I couldn't recall the name. All right. Uh, thanks a lot for coming in, guys. We do appreciate it. We'll uh, break. Uh, I, you know, it's funny. I think of us uh, breaking on time as breaking early. Yes, that's right. <laughs> We're usually 10 minutes late. Thanks for coming in. We Thank do you appreciate so much. it. And uh, we'll see you soon. We'll be back. Love Learn a goddamn thing about it. I couldn't. I'd be happy to teach you, though. Yeah, my learning days are over too. I have no capacity for that. I can't do anything other than do something. Like I can't sit down and read about it. Any. I can't. Yeah, I yeah. can't learn anything. I can't yeah. learn a language. I can't yeah. learn an instrument. I can't even learn how to do the VCR. Yeah. I'm just. I'm done. Yeah. Well, I was done actually about the seventh grade. I don't have that. I just can't do it. What is that? I don't know what it is. I think the brain's plasticity just gets uh, sort of... Stops. No, I, I just have to do stuff. I, I, I learned how to build houses by building houses, but I just right. had to show up and build them. I, I never looked at a manual. I, I couldn't do it. You know the patience to study. Just let me enjoy my weenie, please. That's all I want to do. John? Yeah? You're 26. Yes, I am. What's going on? Um, well, my first... I have two questions for you. One it could be off the air. It's about your college tour thing. Cause what, I, what about it? Um, well, I have some connections at the uh, uh, programming council where I go to college at. And if you guys still are doing the college tour. Oh, thing. you want to, you, we can give you a phone number to call. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we have got an extensive schedule coming what up. What school? Uh, Southern Illinois University at Carbondale. We're going to be at Northern Illinois at DeKalb. Yep, that's, yeah, that's about six hours north of us. <laughs> yeah, they, you know, they invented barbed wire in DeKalb. <laughs> What's bizarre is they, they're having us back. They, they gave us that barbed wire tour, and we made fun of it, and they invited us back. Yeah, by the way, you know you're in trouble as a, as a community and a university when all you do is talk people's ear, uh, ear off about fencing <laughs> that you've invented. Two things, right? What was Cindy that? Crawford. That's it. And the, and oh, the, and the barbed wire. But she's from the Cindy Crawford. Yeah, what else do they tell us? And let me tell you, that Cindy, uh, she sucked up all the good looking out of DeKalb and took it with her when she left. <laughs> It was like I will agree with you on that. Point. It was like God. God made a deal in uh, DeKalb, Illinois. He said, "Listen, <laughs> I can make either all of you uh, all right looking, or I can make one really super good looking one, and the rest of you ugly." <laughs> and then she moved. So now the whole town's screwed. <laughs> oh, and you know it's true. Come on. And my my other question is has to do with uh, like previous questions you've had. Um, like you have, uh, like younger girls, you, know, you had one tonight, a uh, younger girl calling asking if it was okay, you know, like to date an older man. Uh, last week you had a girl who called up and she was like, yeah, I've been having oral and anal sex since I was 12. Right. And she was like, but I like older guys. Right. We went, we went and, nuts, I'm sure. <laughs> now, when I, when I went and I, I had this conversation with my wife, she didn't find anything wrong with it. My wife, my <laughs> wife family's from Yugoslavia, and I guess it's 
as soon as they turn 15 or 16, they're, they're dating guys in their 30s. And I'm just wondering what you guys think of it. Is it a cultural difference that I'm not understanding here? Or? It is a cultural difference. And there are cultural differences from country to country. And there are cultural province to differences, province. but there are absolutes in terms of what is best for people in terms of their development. And while it's reasonable for a 15-year-old to be attracted to older guys, for the most part, the older guys that would go down to that age group, there's something wrong with them. And that's what the laws are in place to protect them. The right, but if it's, a, if it's common practice in Yugoslavia, then the older guys aren't as bad as the older guys are here who would go down to that age group. Possibly true. But, yeah, uh, possibly true. Except for they're drunk. <laughs> yeah, and we just in general believe that... Uh, you know that the, the women are better off and are being protected from predators right. in this way, and they're not in a position to really judge who is or is not of quality when they're so far outside of their peer age. Right. It's hard to judge that. They, the guy just looks cool and sophisticated, and to another twenty-five-year-old, he may look like an absolute loser. Because right. <laughs> <laughs> you made you made the perfect point was like the the one girl was like well i just like older guys and you know he seemed real mature and you were like well how mature is that man to be going out with a 13 -year? right and this is this is the same this is the same argument as the caller who goes my boyfriend's beating me up uh you know he's cheating with my best friend and i love him yeah okay why don't right. you why don't you leave him yeah but i love him Mm. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. You, you would leave him except for you love him i love him yeah oh okay, okay. That, that by the way anyone planning to call in with that problem unacceptable response, unacceptable excuse to say, I, I love the person. It will it'll hang up immediately. Chris, you're 18. Still with us, Chris? Yeah. What's up? Well, um, what I was wondering is, um, my dad, uh, he divorced my mom when I was like uh, one or two years old. And um, he still like insults my mother, um, not trying to say it bluntly, but, you know, kind of I don't know how to say it, but uh, he says it without coming out with it, you know? And uh, my stepmother, she totally hates me, and I don't know what the deal is with them. You know, my dad hates my mother, and my stepmother hates me, and I don't know what's going on here. I have no idea why. Why your, why your dad hates your mom? Yeah, and why my stepmom hates me. Uh, stepmoms, stepparents don't usually like the kids. I hate to say it, but it's true. Well, she doesn't even know me is what really pisses me off about it. Your How stepmother. How long has she been your stepmom? Um, a couple years now. And she has it said to you, that I hate you? Um, not to my face, but what she has told my uh, stepsister and my father, that's what I've gathered. What has she, she told them? She thinks I'm a Satan worshiper and <clears throat> that I'm a little pothead. Mm -hmm. I mean, and she just are you? Me. Well, are you, are you a pothead? Yeah, I'm a pothead, but okay. I'm not a Satan worshiper. All right. Now, who knows what she meant by that? It doesn't mean she hates you. She may just be concerned about you. Nah. <laughs> she just doesn't like me. She, she could have called you a Satan worshiper out of respect. Is what no, she saying. could have been saying, oh, my God, we got to help him. He's, uh, you know, he's going south. Mm, nah, she don't like she, him. She, she was 50% right. Listen, here's the deal. Let me Let me explain what's going on. Chris has some issues. He's got some issues with Dad. He's oh, yes. got issues with the way Dad treats Mom. He's got a few issues with Mom. And then all of a sudden, this stepmother comes into the picture. The stepmother walks into the picture when Chris is, uh, you know, 15 years old. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Chris is just a ball of uh, confused hormones. Yeah. He's wearing a mega death shirt. He's uh, whittling a bong out of a uh, coffee can and a, <laughs> out of a skull and a skull and, a, and an, an expired toilet paper roll he's using all the extra foil in the house to work on the ball she comes in she's confused and you know what she don't have time to figure it out all she sees is some 15 year old rebellious uh, pain in the ass who uh, who has issues with uh, f older females so she gives an inch. She, she comes in. She gives it a try for about five minutes doesn't doesn't get the kind of results she wants this is a screw him this is what happens. He should be in the garage. They should convert a garage into a room. Yeah. It'll work. That's where I lived. I lived in the garage. Worked. Oh, my it, should be, it should be the Corolla. So spineless. How can we describe the, the Corolla child therapy, Corolla technique? It's going to be the Corolla technique. That's great. Yeah. Hey, listen, my stepmother's a, a nice woman, and she's uh, fantastic now, i got to tell you. My whole family's nice right you now. You know why? You, you, because they're all making up for uh, the crappy parents they were. You rarely mention your stepmom. 
My step is it because it's it's sort of a uh, a non factor. But my stepmother is a real good woman who I happen to catch at a bad time in her life, and she probably caught it a bad time in my life. And uh, she was uh, not the greatest stepmother to me. She was not you know overtly abusive or anything. But I was basically. Uh, a pain in the ass. Uh, I was basically a pain in my ass, a pain in uh, her ass, and uh, she was certainly a pain in my ass. And my dad is so um, uh, lily livered and yellow that he basically just caved into whatever her whims were, and that was the situation. So you know, I I moved out when I was nineteen, and that was uh, that was the last of it. Now everyone's nice, of course. You're afraid of what you might say on the radio. <laughs> My grandma said, said to me today, I heard you talking about my clamp on earrings last night. Oh, Jesus Christ. She's monitoring now. I swear to God. I, 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 stop it, everybody. Just stop listening, would you? Why don't you give them the same argument you give all the television executives? Like, grandma? What, what argument? It's comedy. Oh, I try, but you know, they know I mean it. <laughs> all right, what are you looking up? Just a word. All right. You ready to move on? Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Nicole. Yeah. Wow. What kind of Nicole is that? N I K O L E. Yep. That's how you spell it? Yep, I'm a weirdo. Hey, did you tell the screeners that's how you spell it? Yeah. Hey, uh, Sherry and Lisa, don't spell the word the way these idiots tell you to spell it. Just spell it the way everyone else spells it. It's too distracting to you. Because I look at it and I don't, I don't know what it is. Because it doesn't look like Nicole. And then we have to talk about it for 10 minutes. Yeah. It's not your fault, Sherry and Lisa. I'm just saying don't listen to the, to the uh, moronic callers who have their own spelling for their name. Like my sister, her name's Lauren. Mm. Start spelling it L A U R Y N for a while. Mm. <laughs> what do you think my reaction to that was? This was recently. No, it's, I, I, she was an adult. You know, it's like ten years ago. You know, she's like thirty, you, twenty-four. You, you refused to do it. Yes. Yeah, oh, who are you kidding, sis? <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> Don't try to forge an identity by the way by adding a Y to your name. All right, not you though, Nicole. Go ahead. Okay, I've got this problem. Um, I don't have, like, actual intercourse with my boyfriend, but we do have anal and oral sex, basically everything but. What? 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 I knew it. Well, it's just... Weren't we just talking problem. about this? Yes. Yeah. My problem is, is that I when I come, it's like, it's fine, but then when I'm not coming, I still, the juices still come out, and it's a really excessive amount, and I'm wondering, is this normal? It's normal for you, and it's not a bad thing at all. It's just some women produce a lot. I mean, even when I'm not, like climaxing and it happens is that well I mean, it's afterwards though right no it's like during uh, I mean I mean I can climax and like five minutes later it's like I come when I climax but I also do it when I don't mm. what what does this have to do with not having the vaginal intercourse well I mean it's just is that normal Okay, let me, uh, I'm just going to say what I just said one more time. What does this have to do with not having the vaginal intercourse? Well, I don't know. I didn't, I'm not really experienced with that, so. I mean, why, why are you not, exactly do, why are you doing everything else and not that? I'm curious. That's like the only source of innocence I have left. Oh, we're, de we're dealing with a, a diabolical mind. See, someone who would spell Nicole, N-I-K, just like Nicole isn't any different. When you put the K in, you're no more virgin because you haven't been penetrated in that department. But what happened? Something happened to you, right? Who did something to you? Somebody somebody got all of you, right? Oh, no, not really. Huh? No. Somebody did something down there before. No, I've never... I'm a really... It's just, me like, mentally mm. myself that... No. Something's up. What's up? Nothing. I'm just... I was wondering if that was, like, normal. All right, let's just, just stay with the question. No, no, no. i got to get to the bottom of All this. All right, it's normal, Nicole, okay? Are you religious? It is normal. Excuse me? You're religious? No. No. Where's your dad? Oh, he's sleeping. And did, uh, when did you lose your virginity? Oh, you didn't lose your virginity. No, I didn't. But when's, when did you lose your behind? I have no idea. So when's the first time you let a guy uh, get get to you from the back door? Uh, just a couple days ago. Oh, really? Yeah. And before that, you, you had boyfriends, but there was none of that? Yeah, I mean, it was always, like, orally, nothing more. When did you have your... When? How, how old were you when you performed your first uh, act of oral sex? About 14. About 14, maybe 13? Yeah, maybe 13. Uh-huh. Okay. How old was the guy? He was probably about 15 or 16. Maybe 17? No. 
Mm-hmm. Not that old. Maybe 13, 16, 17. Uh, and, uh, and neighbor, no, no neighbor, anything happened before that? No. Babysitter? No, absolutely nothing. I'm a normal child. Have any uh, eating disorders, anything like that? No. Nope. Mm-hmm. On any uh, mood, mood stabilizing drugs? Uh, not prescribed. What are you taking? Oh, I just take a lot of speed during exams, but... Your dad's alcoholic? Um, who? Dad or mom? Oh, no, no, they're, I'm, an, I'm the Brady Bunch kid. I mean, Uh-oh. Mm. That red flag just went up. Just shot out of Drew's ear like uh, one of those gag pistols. Something's up. Something's up with you, Nicole. Do you want to talk about it or you just want to move on? Oh, uh, there's really nothing to talk about. Okay. Mm. Just having the anal sex. Yeah. Okay. All right, and um, you're still a virgin then? Yes, I am. All right. <laughs> That's good. Your uh, your your husband on your wedding night, he's gonna love to hear that, hear that story. <laughs> Believe me, <laughs> that's gonna be his favorite story. <laughs> he's gonna appreciate her having sustained her pristine, yeah, <laughs> quality. Hey, uh, honey, I want you to know that uh, you know besides uh, besides the anal sex and blowing all those guys, I am uh, I'm like the driven snow down there. I gotta tell you, I am pure. I am lily white. All right. And what Nicole needs to know is that there are many glands down there, and some women are very active, and during a, a climax can secrete quite a, a bit of substance. And if it goes on for a while afterwards, that would not be abnormal. She should you, relax. You know, the great thing about guys too is they're 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 ready to go along with this. It, it's beautiful. It's like, hey, I want to pump you. I'm a 17 year old guy. Uh, you can't. I'm going to remain a virgin. Oh, wow, that hurts. Uh, you can't go in the back door. Uh, is that a hole? Uh, yeah, it is. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Actually, girls, you don't even really have to tell any, the guys. Just uh, tell me when to do a doggy. Boy, you are tight. This feels good on my penis and scrotum sack. <laughs> the beauty of guys is guys wouldn't go, whoa, wait a minute. What, what's that about? What kind of retarded logic is that, guys? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little backdoor action, then I'm finishing off with a BJ. God bless you. A guy probably dated for, for 15 years. He's still a virgin. Got a, um, an ass the size of a sewer hole, but uh, she's uh, she's a virgin. All right, How Nicole. Your butt? Look into that. Look into that kind of thinking. And listen, all you geniuses out there that are always trying to uh, skirt the system somehow, stop it. Stop it. You get nailed in your ass. You're not a virgin. That's it. You're you're you're. you're, you're I, I would say that, uh, here's what I would say. And you tell me what you think. Mike, Drew. I would say that one uh, act of butt love is probably worth uh, five or six penetrations. I'm going a year. A year? Mm. A year of... You mean uh, sex with, you know, vaginal. regular regular yeah. vaginal sex? Mm -hmm. but, but how many hymens? <laughs> I mean, how many, how many, how many, you know, oh, so, yeah, I was talking about five, six guys, uh, different guys. I wasn't necessarily saying just uh, occasions, but, yeah, I would say a year. I'm, I'm with Ann. Six, between six months, six between six months and a year of, 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 of uh, vaginal intercourse is worth one, one, uh, one butt love on the sort of filth meter that God looks at. Am I right? Okay, good. We've worked it out. We'll be back. I feel so... Yes, you is. Didn't she have an accent when she was here? Yeah, she had an accent there. Uh. Hi, this is Victoria Silstead, Playboy Playman of the Year. Uh. Yeah, you know, it's funny, the... Uh, what is that, a Swedish or what do you call it, a Nordic or something? What kind of accent Scandinavian. is that? Scandinavian. It's weird because it's not an accent like a rrr. Mm. It's it's a cadence. It's a meter, yeah. They they speak in a little different cadence. Yeah. They speak they speak like um do they're do in, do do. they're inhaling when they're talking or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I gotta get more of them sleeping pills from you, Drew. <laughs> I swear to god I can't go to sleep at night. I go insane. You're, you're panicking right now about what we're up to the next twelve hours. I don't sleep. I sleep like hell. It <laughs> makes me miserable the next day. Oh, I'm so miserable. I wish I could sleep. I can't sleep. You know, I blame my mom, 
My mom told me, my mom in a retarded uh, hippie uh, mentality, my mom, when she was like, I, I don't know, I, I think this is what happened. When I was about 10, she read some article in like uh, uh, Bong Weekly or something <laughs> or, you know, Hemp Monthly that that pillows oh, yeah. were bad for your neck and your spine and your shoulder and they screwed the kid's uh, spine and neck up, right? So she said, uh, she didn't burn the pillow, but I think she said something like, you know, uh, these pillows, they, they screw with your neck or your spine or whatever. You, you're better off without the pillow. Ugh. And uh, now that's, I guess, all right if you sleep on your back. I mean, look, let's face it. We'd all be better off sleeping on a pine plank yes. on our back. The problem is, is we'd never fall asleep. Right. We'd wake up the termite in our ass. Right. So my mom confiscated my pillow or at least suggested that it be taken away and i said all right well i don't want to you know wake up with scoliosis but i slept on my stomach so i got in the habit of putting my elbows and hands together and i sleep on my forearms now because i've created a pillow for myself out of my forearm elbow and upper arm now i sleep with the pillow and the forearm which basically means my head's propped up i'm still getting the scoliosis but I uh, have teeth marks in my forearm when I wake up. It's a it's a horrible situation. I wake up with these big red marks on the side of my uh, mm -hmm. eye, and people think I'm just a, boxing. It's ischemic and black. Huh? Your arm is ischemic and black. No blood. Oh yeah, yeah. My hands fall asleep too. That's another good one. Got to wake up and do that. Plus, I got to pee 15 times in, in the course of the evening. I gotta I gotta catheterize and drug <laughs> myself. Drew, you could be a part of my sleeping pa plan. I want to drug myself and catheterize myself and just go to bed. Yeah, you can't <laughs> masturbate and have a catheter. Can I, I can put it in when I'm done. I Why can't that. I masturbate into the catheter? It would clog up? I don't think the erection would work right. Mm hmm. Michelle? Okay. There's this issue between my boyfriend and I that I'd like to resolve. Um, my boyfriend often has a real hard time keeping it up after we do it once. You know, so, like, we can't go again because it's just limp you know that's normal it's called refractory period well all males have i mean that. like even well. after like a really long time he's he, like we can't go without we can't do it more than once how long is a really long time the, we just forget it for the rest of the night because it, it's not going to happen okay so I figured this settle down like baby issue. it's a what i figure it's some sort of mental issue no like no that's normal you no. Well, look i've had guys before this guy and it's never happened every guy i Okay, I've had two guys before him, and every guy has, like, an instant heart on every time. Hmm. And this guy, like, you know, it's, I don't know. It's Does he have trouble the first time? Huh? Does he have trouble the first time? Um, no. Well, it, you see, it takes a lot of work to get, you know, him to get aroused, I guess you could say. Well, I mean, didn't, that's him. Didn't, didn't, you, didn't Drew just say that, but basically? But, mm -hmm. but, he, but he's able to achieve an erection and sustain well, eventually, it. eventually, right? It doesn't ta but, like, after one, we do it once, then it would just, yeah. like, it's, that's all we're going to do it for the rest of the night. Because it's just, like, it's not going to happen. Well, Drew, don't you think it would help if she told him about those other guys who used to get it up all the time? Right. What do you I, mean? Like, I mean, he knows I've been with other people, but, mm -hmm. I mean, what, what are you suggesting I tell him? Oh, you should tell him, hey, all the other guys are, are with used to give it to me good, like, time after time. Did you try that? No, that kind of sounds bad. Okay, good. I was just test. That was a test. Okay. Thank yeah, God. Real slick. Okay. Good thinking. Good. All right. Uh, listen, guy. You know, women vary quite a bit, but guys vary a little. Do you understand? Okay. There, there's a you know the biology is all about the same with guys, but it varies. How old is the guy? He's eighteen. Okay. Yeah, this varies a little bit. Some guys are good for all night. Some guys are good for once a day. Some guys are good for once a week. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's true, Michelle. That's the way it is. His biology may be just different than the other two guys. He's not on any medication, is he? No. Okay. I mean, and he may have some issues as it pertains to all this. I mean, I can't say that he's not anxious or he's not having problems at the beginning, but it may just be his he's biology. He's got a, a pretty tall, he's got some pretty big uh, shoes to fill, <laughs> too. I mean, this guy. It's so like uh, batting after uh, Babe Ruth, you know. How you what? How do you, how do you suggest I go about this? How do I approach him about all this? You Don't know? expect. It, you know what he does? It uh, it actually in a way it kind of in I know it shouldn't but it kind of insults me. It's like okay. Don't expect there to be more than once. It will not happen. Okay. There. Okay. Uh, I'll have that in set. But and maybe you ought to do it less frequently. Okay. And then when he is uh, you know into it, he'll be more into it because his biology takes longer to, to reset. That's the way some people are. 
Michelle, can't isn't uh, once a night all right with you? No. What's or maybe you? maybe maybe this guy's a once a week guy. Yeah, he could be really rallying yeah. to do it uh, once a night. This won't be forever, will it? Yes. Hold maybe. on, hold on a second. I got to talk to Drew for a minute. I don't know why, but I want to smack this Michelle. Yeah, she's, she's, there's something going on with her. She's got hostile, like some. Hostile. She's hostile, or she's she's prissy, or she must be real good looking, or something. Something's uh, something's up. Yeah. I know I say that about every caller, but uh, it's true though. But yeah. there's something she she has a she has a it it a, a flavor to her. Yeah, it, it's a very sort of a primitive flavor where the relationship is all about uh, penises and vaginas and very you know the, rather than the relationship itself. That she's not. Good Michelle, you real good looking. I'd say so. well, a lot of people have told me so. Yeah, but right. I'm not. Yeah, saying... it's a real good looking people. Here's the thing, and there's really the beauty of the radio. Because I'd probably cave in if I was looking at you and go, oh, baby, you deserve better. But in the radio, you just sound kind of like a bitch. i got to be honest with you. you know, And I can't see how good-looking you are, so I'm free to say it. And other people never say it because that's the life of a good-looking young girl. But uh, you, you sound uh, like a pain in the ass. You're, you really do. You sound a little bit hostile. You, you're 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 a little insulting. I mean, to this guy, this you know, he oh, gives you I'm sex not once a night. I'm him at all. Mm, there's something going on, though. I mean, don't you like the guy? Oh, I, I, I like him a lot, and I care about him a lot. All right. That's why it, it concerns me. I want to know how to deal with it. It's not like I approach him this way at all. All right. You see how people's attitude changes when I insult them? Yes. You know, everyone, everyone yells at me for I yelling at everybody. You're intimidated or something. Me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty confident with myself at all. I know. Okay, I'm sorry if I'm coming around a little bitchy. It's just... Uh, well, I listen to you, and it's just like... Well, you're a smart girl, right? Yeah. That's not a loaded question. You're smart. You're a smart think... girl. And you, you, you understand that there's differences in guys. And this guy's a little bit different. But it's not the worst we've heard. That's for damn sure. It, does not, it has nothing to do with you, so you can take it off yourself. Okay. And this may be a once-a-week guy mm. and you may have to pay him anderson that. i think he'd get it up twice for no, no probably right. maybe not then you uh, you may you may have that may be for whatever reason whether it is because he isn't in, inhibited or because it's just the nature of his biology that's the way he's going to be and if you care about this person and if this is a quality relationship and if you can get out of your own skin enough to connect with him that won't matter so much to you in the long run. Well, we've talked about it, but I just, the thing is, I don't know how to actually deal with it after it happens. It's like, what do I do? I say, I mean, what do, do I hold him? I say, oh, it's okay. I mean, it, it actually, honestly, it is okay. Right, then do not expect a second time and go down to once a week and see what happens. Yeah, okay, so okay. then, so I should just, I mean, how do I let him know that is it like, and I just don't, don't even think about a second time. Well, listen, just have sex. When you're done having sex, watch TV. And then you go to bed. That's it. Sounds good. Okay. Wait, wait, that's my plan. It's your that's life. what I do. It's my life. Except you're, so not, you're, with another, you're not with another person. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, Michelle. Do you have to put this on the air? Hmm? Do you have to put this on the air? No, we won't put it on the air. All right. Okay. Yeah, because, I mean, I'm not into that whole thing. I'm, that's cool. All right. All right. Thank uh, you. Thanks a lot. See ya. Bye-bye. Don't deceive our listeners. Our callers. Well, I don't want to put that on the air. <laughs> we'll respect her wishes. She was sassy, that Michelle. She was all right. You know, people tell me all the time, why do you yell at the, the listeners? And I go, listen, when I yell at them, they come back, uh, they're, they're a thousand times improved. They do it all the time. I yell at somebody for being disrespectful, or I yell at them for uh, or, or having their TV or, or TV turned up or their stereo uh, up or whatever. We come back and they say, we're sorry. <laughs> it's, it's a great plan. I wish it worked in real life. It only seems to work on this show. Mm. I yell at guys behind the counter. They call security. Yeah. All right, Drew. Let's go. Ready to go to break? Yeah. All right. This is Love Line. All right. All right. Until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed herein are not necessarily those of the staff or management or producers or directors or the advertising or anyone. They might be Bob's. I'm Bob, and they're mine. The producer of Love Line is Ann Wilkins. Love Line is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment. Grr. Arg. We now return you to your high.